I'm setting up my first 3D printer, a printer bot. This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by GoToAssist. Hey everybody, I'm Shannon Morris and I'm playing with my very first 3D maker. Specifically, this one is called the PrinterBot LC. So you can buy this one, it's pre-assembled for like $7.99. We have the one that would normally cost $649 bucks, and it takes like six hours to actually compile everything, all the hardware and everything to get this actually running. And the software isn't even in that total time. So today I wanted to show you how to do the software and how to get everything ready for your own PrinterBot LC. And then hopefully you'll start making your own 3D prints at home pretty quick and simple after I figured out all the parts that break. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, Printerbot.com is the website where you can get all the details on how to install everything and you can find different printer bots that you can purchase. So that's where you can find um, all the installation guides and whatnot. Now the first thing we wanna do is go to the program called Repeater Host. Now, since I already have a, a, a product, a project compiled in here, I can't get into the printer settings, but I'll go ahead and tell you what exactly you have to do with that. So the first thing you wanna do is go ahead and connect your printer. So you wanna you know, put in the power supply, make sure that's working and your fan is working. You also wanna uh, plug it in via USB to your computer so you know that you're getting a connection between your USB or your computer and the printer. Now, one thing I did find out with this is when you plug it in via USB, you might have to install some drivers for it as well. So keep that in mind. Uh, just go into the device manager and make sure that it pops up correctly. If not, just Google it and you'll find the uh, correct drivers for it. After that, you can go ahead and get into the Repeater Host program. So you open this up and the first thing you need to change is your USB connection. Make sure you're connected to the proper USB port and the baud rate. So you wanna change that to 250,000. After that, you want to change the behavior of your printer bot. So this is basically the temperature and the heat bed uh, temperature, both of those. For the printer bot LC, that's going to be 210 degrees Celsius and 70 if you're using ABS. PLA is a little bit different. That one is 190. Your dimensions are going to be about 150 millimeters. So that is basically the size of your printer bot's heat bed. So that's you know, 150 millimeters, 150, and then 150 up. So it's basically an exact cube. Uh, the other printer bot that they have on sale, that one's about 200. So it's a little bit larger than this one, but we have the little guy right here. Now you can move on to your slicer settings. So slicer is a, um, is a program that you can use for 3D printing and 3D modeling. It's going to basically compose everything and make it uh, work with your printer. It's a lot more uh, scientific than that, but I'm making it super easy. So what you need to do with this is click configure. And once that opens, you need to change just a few things in here. Uh, these basically have to do with the temperature as well and speeds and then a couple of other settings. So we go in here to print settings. I'm gonna change the layers and the perimeters. These are, are going to be 0.3 millimeters and then the first layer height will be 100%. After that, I go to infill. Fill density is 0.3 and then we're going to keep it as rectilinear for the fill patterns and the top bottom fill pattern. Everything else you can leave the same so you don't have to change any of those. Uh, you can skip down to skirt and brim after that and you wanna do two loops total. Now we'll go over to filament settings. So the diameter, this is going to be the diameter of your uh, ABS, the plastic, the filament that you're using. This is 2.95 millimeters. For cooling, you wanna scroll down all the way to the bottom and you're going to change a couple of things down here. Enable fan if layer print time is below 70, slow down if layer print time is below 20, and then the minimum print speed is going to be 15 millimeters per second. So hopefully that's pretty quick because I can't wait to print out this awesome shark. After that, you just go over to general for printer settings and you wanna change the bed size. So this is really important. This makes sure that you're not printing outside of your actual range. I only have 150 by 150 millimeters, so I had to change that on the X and the Y axis as well. So print center, obviously that's gonna be the middle of your printer, the print 
very center of the actual uh, bed. So that's 150 divided by two for each one. So that's 75. That's pretty easy and pretty obvious. Then we go over to extruder one. Nozzle diameter for most printers that you're going to find on the market, all your 3D printers, is going to be 0.4 millimeters. Most of them apparently use the same kind of nozzles. So that's a pretty obvious setting. Now, once you're done with all these, I really suggest that you save all of your settings so you don't have to mess around with them again. So up here, I just click the Save button, and I saved them all as PrinterBot. So anytime I open this up, Slicer, it's going to automatically go to the PrinterBot settings, the file that I have saved. Now I can close this, discard any changes, continue anyway, yeah. Okay, so this is where we get to the really fun part. This is where we connect, we make sure that it's printing properly, and then we get it set up to actually start printing our very first model. I'm so excited! So, first thing you do is click connect up here, and you should get a little green power button. Now, if you get any kind of errors when you do that, just make sure that you have the drivers installed and you have it plugged into the right port. Make sure that your serial connection is giving you the right, uh, right access to the printer. So, I connected already, and then I go over to manual control. Now under manual control, you can change around the X and Y axes as well as the Z axis. So Z is what it makes it go up and down, X and Y make it go right and left and forward and backwards. Each of these you want to test out at about 10 millimeters and make sure that it's having no problems moving back and forth. This is especially important if you've built your own, you've never done one before, you want to make sure that you put everything together correctly and you're not going to have any problems or anything breaking like the, uh, the cords or the belts. So, go ahead and test that out, and once you have that done, click the little home button. So, if I click home right now, it basically configures the printer bot to go specifically to the front left corner. And this is going to set it up for pretty much every single printing job that I do thereafter. So I'm always going to set it to home after I've done uh, compiling and configuring it. So after that, I think I'm pretty much ready. So let's go ahead and download our very first printer model. So I'll go over to Thingiverse. Ooh, look at that, a Legend of Zelda rupee LED cover. Okay, that's kind of awesome. So from Thingiverse, you can download all sorts of free uh, 3D projects that you can just use for your printer bot, no matter what kind of um, printer that you have. They work f with several of them, if not most. So you can go into whichever one you want. So the one that I did was Mr. Jaws. Mr. Jaws. This is the one that's suggested by PrinterBot in case you've never done one before. It'll basically give you an idea, make sure that everything's working correctly, and it's generally pretty small, so it's not going to take that much time to actually print it out. So you go here, and then you just click download this thing and you'll get this nifty little zip file if you chose to download all things. So I'm going to show this in the folder. So this is my Mr. Jaws copies. So there's two in here. There's Mr. Jaws and Mr. Jaws version 2. I just went with Mr. Jaws number 1. I go back to Repeater, and from Repeater I can go ahead and add my new project. So I have Mr. Jaws.stl here. If I wanted to add something new I could choose Mr. Jaws version 2, click open, and from there you choose slicer, and you want to slice with slicer. So after you've chosen it, go to slicer, hit slice with slicer, and it's going to give you this G-code editor. So you'll notice on the, uh, the model over here, it's basically going to give you the exact track of where your printer is going to go. So it's going to show you exactly what's going to happen with your printer, and if you want to make any changes, you can actually do that here. Um, I, for one, am not that advanced with 3D printers, so I'm not making any changes to the G-code. So after that, I go back over to manual control, make sure I'm at home, looks good. And then I go to my heat and heat extruder and print bed. So down here I'm going to make sure that it's set to 210 degrees, which it is, and then heat print bed, which is also on, I'll change to 70. So you can see right here with these two numbers, 209 degrees, so it's 
just under 210, and then 67 degrees Celsius, just under 70. So you can tell that it's starting to get up to the point where I can go ahead and start printing out my new project, my Mr. Jaw Shark. So after this, you want to check your temperature curve. This is going to show you exactly where your printer is on the timeline. There's going to be a purple line up at the top around 210 degrees and then one down here at 70. You can kind of see it down there since it's not quite up to uh, up to range. Once you get your red line for the actual nozzle and the printer bed, the blue line up to speed, you can go ahead and start your printer. So let's go ahead and start it and see how it goes. You guys know it's that time of year again when everyone is trying to spend some time away from the office, whether it be vacations or just anything to get into the sun. And let me tell you, taking personal time being in IT is a huge challenge because users, man, they always need support. The network always needs support. The systems always need to be managed. That's why I recommend GoToAssist from Citrix. Basically, three essential tools, all in one, easy to use, integrated, cloud-based platform. You got GoToAssist remote support, lets you provide any kind of live or unattended support from PC, Mac, or mobile devices from anywhere, even from the iPad or Android device for free. I love that, I use it on Android for free all the time. And so you can take your, you know, take some time away from the office too, right? Plus, GoToAssist monitoring lets you be proactive, identifying issues before they become a huge headache. And you can easily keep track of all of this stuff with a GoToAssist service desk. So I, I've, like, I've actually been on a date and like taking care of like a server that was going down on my Android and just like, boom, you know, that's, I know that's really geeky and a bit personal, but hey, save the day. And I want you guys to be able to save the day too. So you can sign up for a special 30 day free trial. Visit GoToAssist.com, click on the Try It Free button and use the promo code HAK5. That's GoToAssist.com, promo code HAK5. This week in the Hack Shop, we're having a special on the Landtap Pro. You can get $5 off your Landtap Pro purchase for one week only. Head over to hackshop.com and use the coupon code TAPTHATPRO. Yeah, that's right. I came up with that one. Now, once again, our deepest grat gratitude goes over to you guys for your support of Hack5. So thank you so, so much. We really couldn't do with without you. And make sure to use that coupon code upon checkout. Now, don't forget. Hacker Cross America is still going on. I think Darren's home for a little bit, but we will be heading out to DEF CON at the end of the month, so make sure to check out hackshopamerica.com for the trip announcements, the events, the conferences, and everything that's going on with that. And of course, we value your feedback. We read pretty much every email, so email us, feedback at hack5.org. Let us know what you think of the show and what you'd like to see me cover next week. And of course, don't forget, you can always find links to everything that we do, all of our social networks and whatnot, at hack5.org slash follow. And with that, I'm Shannon Morse, and for Darren Kitchen, who's currently, I don't know, maybe he's still on the West Coast. I get so confused with that guy. He's all over the place. Oh, but definitely check out his blog where I might have shown up in San Diego during that meetup. That was good times. But of course, we're reminding you to trust your Technolust. See you next week. That was a very wide turn. Now I'm just gonna, there's the beans. Wow.